This is not about making anyone feel pity or saying that my life would have been worse than others. This is my attempt to finally get over it all and being done with my past and start living for the future. And all this is about helping others, saying whatever you have encountered in your life, how bad your life may be, you are not alone and chances are you can do it. This is my story of the last 19 or rather the last 8 years. When I was 11 years old I ran into my dad's bedroom on a Saturday morning to ask him whether he was feeling better. Feeling better than the last evening. And he never responded. This is how I lost my father in September of 2010. A couple days later, while I was in the bathroom, I heard the phone ringing. It was strange and I still can't explain why till this day, but the moment I heard the phone I knew it. I knew that this was the call to inform my mom that my aunt, my father's sister, has just passed away. At this point in time, I still did not really realize that I had just lost my dad. And looking back from now, I would actually say that this took me some more years to really understand. And yeah, a couple years passed and I really did good in school. And even if it was hard sometimes to see my mother cry while trying to hide my own tears, just so she would not worry about me too much, all in all... I was really doing quite well. I was a good student, had a lot of friends and really lived a decent life. Somewhere in between all these years, my uncle passed away too, but to be honest, it really had not so much impact on me. I know it sounds brutal, but you know, at this point, I was kind of used to all this, seeing people cry, people passing away, preparing funerals, getting all the bureaucratic stuff done. And, yeah, you would wonder how much time all this stuff takes. After all, dying isn't easy at all. In 2013, my grandfather passed away, and at this point, I really felt bad and guilty when I was attending his funeral. You know, of course, I was sad to have lost another family member, but what really stood out to me was my disability to cry. You know, I just stood there, looking at him in his casket and tried to cry, but... It was just not working. It was just too normal, in a way, to see people passing away. And don't get me wrong, I really had some moments where I missed him and I cried about him, but not at this moment. And after all, I think, even if this may sound cold and brutal, this might, might have been the case due to the fact that I had already encountered something worse by, by losing my dad. And there's nearly nothing that could hurt you as bad as losing your dad did, even if it's losing your grandfather. Just a couple months after this, we got the call that my aunt just died due to a multiple organ failure. By this time, my grandmother was already put to nursing home, suffering from dementia, which only gets worse with time. This all was in 2013, and once again, my life would be decent, I did good in school, thought I could handle everything and, you know, had fun with my friends who stood by my side all this time. And again, I did well most of the time. I actually would do too much for school and stress myself because I was so scared of failure because on the day he passed away, I promised my dad that I would pass my finals and do good at school. And after all, this was exactly what I did. Of course, I had some bad times, for example, I'm the kind of guy to get stomach pain before taking tests and stuff, but as I said, I always passed them, often with really good results. But the one thing I always missed during school was, was a person to be by my side, who supports me, someone to love, a partner. I, I really missed a girlfriend. Luckily, in early 2017, I got to know her. It would take us till early April 2017 to get together, but after that was done, I really felt complete. I finally felt like I had dodged all the strokes of fate. I felt like I passed all the tests. And yet again, I was wrong. 
Just 11 days after we got together, my girlfriend was sexually abused by a classmate while I was busy learning for my final exams to finally graduate. And even though it was extremely difficult, me and my girlfriend promised each other to get through this together. So I would continue writing all my exams while she was in treatment by her psychologist. And to my own surprise, it all worked out. I passed without any problems, even moderated our prom and gave the speech at it too. And you know, it was amazing. I always loved to talk in front of people, knowing that they actually would listen to me. I basically told them that shit happens. And by this time, you could probably tell I was really aware of what I was talking about, but that you should never give up. And that I was really happy having spent my last eight years of my life together with all those people. When this evening was over, I was yet again in a good mood, thinking everything would work out in the end. However, a couple months later, in August, when my girlfriend told me we had to talk, but I should not worry, I knew it. Again, something has happened. The same day we broke up, as her statements started to not make any sense anymore, and would soon be conflicting. Till so much indeed that till this point I still don't know what of our whole relationship has been true and real and what was not. However, I hope that she is doing better now and can get through all her mental illnesses being caused by this abuse and that she will at some point in time be happy, just like me. However, the pain that I once again felt breaking up with her was very real. I was confused. What has really happened to her? What will happen to her in the future? And did the guy who did all this to her finally get arrested or not? I was kind of left alone with my thoughts, not being able to connect with her again, not wanting to connect with her again. After all this... Very bad thoughts came up in my head. Did she infect herself with some kind of illness? Maybe did I in our relationship? I went crazy. I thought about it day and night and finally visited a couple of doctors and they all said, no, you are fine. They tested me, they tested my blood, they tested everything. And on a physical level, I'm fine. But the problem is... Going through all this on a mental level, I'm not. The day we broke up, I relived a feeling I did not have in years. It was the same feeling I got when my dad passed away. It was this devastating pain so deep in your chest and you just want to rip it out. The moment we split, I started to shiver instantly. I was in some kind of rush. Didn't really hear nor feel anything, just repeating that this all could not be real, finally collapsing and just crying on the floor, feeling once again helpless and left alone because I could not do anything about it. Just like when I lost my dad. Still, till this day I suffer from it, even though the doctors say I'm fine, on a physical level, the cracks in my mental state of mind are so deep, I do have physical symptoms caused by all these mental problems and those symptoms are very real even though I'm fine. To this day not a single one has passed not thinking about her and all that that has happened to her and us. And I can honestly say once again I hope that one day she will be doing fine again. When the New Year's Eve came around I was really looking forward to it letting all of 2017 and all the bad things behind. This evening, my grandmother finally passed away after suffering from dementia, and at the end she did not even recognize anyone, could not eat, speak, walk, or do anything on her own. And I would say that it was a good thing she finally passed, because it would just break my heart apart staying next to her bed, seeing her dying slowly and painfully. And yeah, here I am, suffering from all this, being broken many times, having cried a lot. Lots of lots, in fact, in the past 19 years. How I said, still, to this day, my physical health is being influenced by my mental state of health a lot. I fear to have all kinds of diseases, 
because so many people around me just passed away like in a blink of an eye. I fear to be left alone, I fear to never be happy again, and would oftentimes catch myself looking at old pictures of me thinking, well, the world was perfectly fine back then, but now it's not. However, I did not make this video to complain about all this, to say all my life is and has been always bad, because this would simply not be true. Though in the past 19 years I suffered a lot, that's true, but I also found the best friends, the ones picking me up when I'm down, spent beautiful times with them and had fun after all. For example, after passing my finals, I had the best vacation with a couple of friends in my whole life because I was feeling so free, I was feeling great, I knew at this time I had a girlfriend and I had passed my finals and it was, I had the feeling like the world would just be like an open place to do whatever you want. There were and hopefully will be good feelings in my life. This video is not here to show everyone what a shitty life I had or have. It's here for the others who are or have been in a similar situation. It's a statement for all of you. I'm here to say you are not alone. And after all, this video is for me. Everything I just told you is on my mind since it took place. It's constantly pulling me down. Its weight is on my shoulders and sometimes I feel the urge to explain the world how all of this came to be. And this is what this is. An attempt to lose some weight, to explain myself and help me and others to carry on. As I said, my life has been shitty and let me down many times and surely I have been broken many times during the last 19 years, but you know, sometimes, after one of those incidents, I would just stay at my window, look at the moon and talk to my life, saying stuff like, well played, well played. But if you want me to finally give up, you surely have to come up with something better. I know that life always wins in the end, you know, in the end we're all dead. But you know what? I'm not done yet. And yes, I'm freaking scared. In a couple of days I will leave this place to live in New Zealand with my best friends for the next eight months. During this time my mother will move houses. This means I leave, in the, I leave this place, I leave it forever, and the place where I lost my dad, where I celebrated with my friends, where I had the first date with my girlfriend, where I laughed, cried, screamed, where I lived. I do not know what the future holds, whether everything will be alright someday or everything will go wrong once more. And I will admit I'm freaking scared, but if all this is just the beginning, this is gonna be a hell of a ride. I do not know what the future holds, but I'll do my best to find out. And as JD in one of my all-time favorite series Scrubs says, it's never good to live in the past for too long. So this is my attempt to stop doing this and finally live for the future. Because as I said, I'm neither dead nor done yet. Thank you.